Hello. Hi. Hola, Esperanza. How are you? Good, and you? Thank you so much for the invitation. No, thanks for, for joining, and um, it's a pleasure to have you. How are you? I'm good here at my <laughs> studio. So, <laughs> how That's, about you? I'm good. I'm in my apartment in Brooklyn. Um, let me see if we can um, show some of your work. Um, yeah, let me see. Uh, sorry about that. Okay. Yeah. Can you see that? Yes. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about that work? <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you. Um, and thank you, everybody that joined today. I'm seeing some familiar uh, names, so I'm happy to see everybody that is around here. Thanks for joining and inviting me, Natalia. Um, this piece is called Monumento a la TV, a monument to TV, and it's a it's an artwork that is very important for me in my work because I use it a lot. I did this piece in 2010. Um, TV is like, I think it's a magical object. When I did it was when the internet was kind of uh, starting and the TV was fading. So I kind of wanted to do a monument. I work a lot with the idea of creating monuments. I like TV a lot, not only because it's a magical object that I was only allowed to watch uh, sometimes like an hour a day when I was a kid, but also because it's an equalizer and it's an object that uh, surpasses different social classes, economical, um, you know, it's just in almost in everybody's household, there is a TV. So I've always been fascinated about that. I also have been fascinating about how many different information you can get from it, from educational programs, from soap operas, from news, and um, so this, this equalizer, I've been using it in different ways through all my work. And the, the, um, the materials that you use are, uh, is that clay and um, concrete also? Um, well, it, it's a brick. I feel like Latin American artists, we have, um, we use a lot of bricks in our artwork. I think it's a reiteration. I'm always intrigued by that. I just feel because, um, so anyway, the materials are hydrocol. They're like, I cast the TVs and uh, then it's like a brick and then it's concrete. And in a way it's a reference to construction. Um, mm -hmm. I, a lot of my work is about modernness in Latin America and well in, in the world and the, its influence in Latin America via architecture. So I'm, I'm, I find amazing and so great all those buildings that are like ghost buildings that are all around Latin America here too, but a lot less um, that are in continuous construction and that they never, they never end up finishing for many reasons can be like money laundering can be that there's no more money who knows there's it's uh, that's another longer conversation so in a way all the materials are referenced to all of that to construction in latin america yeah and also talking about uh these ghost objects um, we can talk about this work um that is a reference to all these antennas that yes that, yeah you have a, a right actually that that work sorry it's right behind you the same image yeah that's true <laughs> it's over there <laughs> yeah i actually have an archive of these antennas these antennas are tv antennas that are from the southeast of venezuela i grew up i grew up between caracas and a little town called golindano and I'm fascinated by these this TV antennas. They're like this magical, invisible uh, objects that are in the middle of the tropical lush landscape. And they're like, um, in my childhood, I was just fascinated by them because they were these invisible structures that uh, were done in the most uh, rural and uh, ingenious and popular way from like the people that live there and they were just TVs, basically from people that, uh, 
had like no money. So they were in very rural places. Instead of having a TV that you can buy, these ones were made with, and then, um, so I was fascinated by them because they're like rusted fans and done with the most precarious materials. And in the way it's so sophisticated that they can be a TV antenna. And that was my first relationship with it when I was a kid. And then by growing up, they felt like this to champion like, um, objects in the middle of the tropics and uh, so I have an archive of them and I've been working with them and in a way it was really hard to bring them to art because it was like reality was better than fiction but I decided uh, eventually to bring them into my work and um, first I have a, the arch the, an archive of them as photographs then I've been doing sculpture silk screens I like have recreated them in all possible ways and it has to do with the other sculpture that was before about the tv um, in the way of like this, uh, and and then it started. And you can stop me and ask me any question if you have to. If anybody has a question, they just started being like political uh, objects because I mean I'm from Venezuela and uh, my country has been really politicized, kind of what's happening right now in the U.S. But I've been living like this in this polarized. Uh, atmosphere for basically all my adult life. And uh, these antennas uh, are in a way how, like, you know, basically more middle class or upper, upper middle class uh, households will use internet. And uh, is the people that are like, in more rural places or more lower class incomes that they have TVs. And then I was fascinated how this like, totally like sophisticated object this antenna was a way of bringing into people's households like all this political propaganda from the government and uh, when i was in golindano in rural places and i would watch tv it sounded like we were in war and like it was like a fantasy land so then i decided to bring this imagineer imagery and all this narrative into the work and it's they're they're called las antenas de golindano right yeah yes and this one is like vertical, but it came, which is fine. That is horizontal, but it's just like, they're, they're like just gorgeous because they're like this thin lines that they're very invisible and not everybody notices them. Like a lot of my, the, my family members have never noticed them. Uh, it's yes, I'm fascinating because they're like so long. And um, then I've been doing this other work that is related with like NASA and uh, having this juxtaposition of high and low um, mm -hmm. is just amazing. <laughs> and is there a reference to the to the black sound? Yes, um, I I'm I'm just kind of fascinated with this idea of soil and like the idea of the earth and in in a no construction way. Um, this uh, the the stick that holds the antenna goes directly to the dirt and to the earth. And uh, then I use the element of dust, earth, and other different ways through my work. So in a way, there are things that link one story with the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes me think about like black sand from like volcanic, like the beaches in, in Puerto Rico. <laughs> <laughs> and this work also, um, it's super interesting. The, the flag has a way. I mean, not always, but you have a few um, pieces that with the the iconography of a flag. Can you talk about this piece in particular? Yes, um, this piece is called uh, the La Balsa de la Esperanza, and for those that don't know Spanish, it's called the Raft of Hope. Um, I did this piece that I've been working with in me uh, like. In a way, as, as it's mentioned before, like I'm a Venezuelan artist and all my work in a way, I feel like I'm a visual storyteller. Um, so I try to create stories with my sculptures and that's why I use all these different media. So um, I'm just fascinated with sand and like the black sand and in this case sand because of the ephemerality. I've been working, I work in different, with different themes, but one of them is immigration. I started the theme of immigration in a very naive way. Uh, it was just when I started, when I moved here, that was in 2000 and my immigration reality was very different. And the immigration perception was very different than the one that is right now in, in, in 
in, our, in the spirit of the times. So this raft of hope uh, was kind of, um, I, was, I was invited by Creative Time to do a sandcastle, which seems like a really silly project, but it was like a great project for me to experiment with this idea. I'm like fascinated by um, the kind of uh, things that have in common, like um, like how I mentioned before, with the antennas, the high and low culture. So I'm very interested in like illegal immigrants and like astronauts. And um, I know he's not very popular right now, but you, we can think about Christopher Columbus and, um, and all the explorers that in this quest of a better world, they do this crazy things. And one of them is like go into this perilo perilous and kind of like, kind of dangerous like rafts or like spaceships that they seem they're gonna disarm in any moment. So I was thinking, and, and Jerry Cole and the Raft of the Medusa and all of this, but it was in a way to make a gesture about immigration and arriving. Yeah, and the flag, do you still have that? Is this the only way that it's, um, that it's uh, presented the work or can you adapt to different places? I could, I mean, I, when I, I was asked once to recreate it and I didn't want to at the moment because I felt it was an ephemeral work, which is something that I work a lot with, that things that are not going to exist anymore. And ideally, it would just be in the beach in the middle of nowhere. So recreating it in a, in a gallery, it seems like maybe it will lose a little bit of its magic. But I, it's done in a way that I can recreate it. The, the flag actually... <laughs> Um, it was supposed to be like a, a neutral white uh, flag, kind of in a reference with like peace flag and all of that that we know. But I left the flag that day. So I was lucky, <laughs> this is maybe like more anecdotal, that a friend of mine lent it to me. It was her baby uh, <laughs> wrapping or whatever. <laughs> I love that. So it's basically like a, a sheet of... Uh, <laughs> yeah well in a way it's very resourceful in the way how latin american artists think it was like okay we have to do something i i forgot it everything was really planned except but i forgot it <laughs> <laughs> that's an amazing story um <laughs> and you have another flag also um, yes you, uh, oh. the video work this is, a, yes, this is a six, uh, six, six channel uh, piece. It's like six monitors. And uh, I did this in the Mark of the Day of the Immigrant from a project that Tanya Bruguera had at the moment. And I was invited by Tom Finkerfriend from the Queens Museum at the moment. And, it, and this was done in December 18. And it was a project that she did that was all around the world. And um, for this project, I did a performance, a uh, solitary performance that was like starting at the uh, Statue of Liberty and it was ending at the United Nations. And the idea was to claim the state of the immigrants. The flag um, is a flag that it has in script, uh, La Lucha por la Locha which in translated, it's not literal. Ex it ex this expression exists in many, um, different in, in every language and every country basically but in English it's another day another dollar and uh, in a way I think that's why the majority of immigrants move or migration is economical circumstances so it was a commentary about that it was a really interesting performance because I was sweeping and I was sweeping the floors of New York and I was invisible and that's how and it was I work a lot with invisibility. That's also why I have the dust, um, things that disappear. And I was collecting this dust and uh, nobody would really see me. And I used certain things like the church, the Supreme Court, uh, immigration monuments, just to make statements about where I ended and proclaim the Statue of the Liberty, the, the flag, sorry, proclaim the, the state of the the nation of the immigrants <laughs> in the United Nations. So it's funny like, enough, this, sorry. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> now this piece is based on a story. I, I just like this, this like of 
people that are not from Latin America do not normally get this, this element, but it's Rodrigo de Triana. And this piece is called Tierra La Vista, that is Land Ho. And basically we were raised so much in the narrative of the moment, probably it's not taught like that at all, about Rodrigo de Triana that was the first person that discovered America. So I created this whole, I like creating stories. So I created this whole narrative where I was a descendant of, or the person that's <laughs> is the descendant of Rodrigo de Triana. And he went as Rodrigo de Triana, not validated or invisible by history. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I, I just want to show uh, a little bit of, um, from your website, the way that it's, it was uh, installed. So there's some, um, uh, a few TV, here monitors and here TVs. And this is documentation of, of you. How long did it take you to, to get from one place to the other? It was a whole day. <laughs> it was super <laughs> cold. <laughs> so it was super hard uh, to finish it. And it was really hard to um, sweep with the flag and go through the streets. What was incredible is that I was invisible. Like nobody, you know, like would pay attention to me or, or stop me. Where I was more visible was in the United Nations, where it was the only place where people looked at me. It was like if I wasn't there, like I think if I would have been with a flag, I would have been more visible, but because I was sweeping and I think people don't like seeing those odd jobs of society, it was like if I wasn't present. Yeah. It's a, I think it's a beautiful work. Thank uh, you. Really nice. Um, and this piece, is, is it connected to the other one? Um, the um, uh, antennas? Yes, I'm happy that you see the connection because I use the soil again. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> this piece is called, it was not me at the part in, at the part in who changed the world. And it says, I, I'm working again with this idea of rooms. The images that are in the, um, in the sculpture are of Apollo and of the moon. And it's also, it's basically a reference what I was saying before with the raft of, of hope, La Valsa de la Esperanza. It's like a kind of a monument to astronauts and this idea about when we think about like, um, you know, when it's thought about like going to the moon, it's think, we think about exploration, but when we think about coming here, it's think about illegal immigration. So it's kind of like thinking about all these things and the quest of the new world. And in a way, by when you move, is you become part of nowhere. So it's yeah. all of this. <laughs> yeah, like, like it's it's like uh, inhabiting like this non place um that is like very open and very also very open and it's like you don't know what's gonna happen <laughs> and let me see if i can show more of this work i'm really excited about this one um <laughs> so can you explain um to the audience what what is this in the floor yes. <laughs> <laughs> well If, if you go back one second to the other one, in the mm -hmm. back of the sculpture that I have with the black yeah. soil, but you can't see it there, there's a drawing. Yeah, it's um, too small. Let me show, yeah. sorry. Um, okay, here's the drawing. Yes. <laughs> And you see, um, there's some like, Um, borrones. Um, people have erased the the drawing, um, and this is the the piece that was in the floor, the gallery floor. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I can show another one. Let me see. I mean, it's it's you can see it more or less. <laughs> yeah. No. And, and and if you want to, it was just to bring into context with the erasers. So. The erasers, this piece is called Everybody Knows uh, That Cities Are Built to Be Destroyed. 
I started this series in 2008, actually, <laughs> and I still continue it. And um, it's basically my favorite work to do. <laughs> and uh, it started in a... Um, it, the the title the title of it is based on a song of Caetano Veloso that it starts like that I as I think about TV I think a lot about music I like things that are equalizer and egalitarian in society and especially in Latin America we kind of all hear this listen to the same music it doesn't matter your social class and unfortunately with the disparities in economical and political and social problems in Latin America which my work is basically about um, these things are very important and do define your life and your world. So, um, and uh, and this, and I started doing my drawings, and this, I was invited by a great uh, institution and a great creator uh, of, of Venezuela called Taya Rivero uh, to do a project uh, with El Banco Mercantil. She made this project of silk screens and invited artists. And I did the silk screens that were like kind of what I was telling before about like this uh, structures of buildings that are, um, you know, like this, the structures of buildings before the walls are put up that are in all cities, but in Venezuela, they stay like that. And they tragically stay like that even more within all the, the problems that our, my country has. So um, I started doing silk screens like that and I brought them to Lower Manhattan. I was doing at the time a residency at the Lower Manhattan Cultural Council and I had a corner office, which was really surreal for somebody from my, my background and where I come from. It was like a corner office that was once an office of a CFO of, uh, of Lehman Brothers or something like that. So suddenly I was in the bank world in Wall Street and in my... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like surreal. It was amazing at the most amazing view. And suddenly in, in my, um, and I was really intimidated by the space. And what I loved doing the most actually was sleeping. <laughs> and I would wake <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah, it was like not what I was supposed to be doing. But I would <laughs> wake up from my naps and I would have the surreal views. And um, when I came back from doing my project of Venezuela Feltaga with my silk screens, when I put them in the wall, uh, people that would come to visit me when I had studio visits or whatever, like people would think I was talking about 9-11 and Wall Street and Lower Manhattan. And I was not at all. I was all, um, all my reference has, and all my, my imagery and all my work is about my nostalgia and my missing home and missing the landscape and missing Venezuela and seeing everything crumbling in my eyes uh, without me being able to do nothing. And um, so I was fascinated that the most organized, like uh, that the most organized place like Manhattan could be merged with the most a chaotic place like how it is Caracas it's like a it's a mess there like the chanty towns the landscape it's crazy and that people have their own narratives and that um, it was fascinating for me so anyway I started doing more this 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 drawings that were like just about modernness and about using uh, basic forms that in, that enhance the spaces that we live in that are like rectangles and I just kind of decided to destroy them <laughs> and um, <laughs> then the first ex I did the first one at the lower Manhattan Cultural Council and it happened to me that was like an amazing space and it was like when I think about recreating the raft of the of, of hope la balsa de la esperanza in the sand in that gallery space it kind of didn't make sense to bring that into a white cube but I did I brought it in, then I had a second, uh, when I started doing my drawings, I had one in, in, a, in a gallery that was amazing, that doesn't exist anymore, but it was Galeria Fernando Subillaga in Caracas, part of Los Calpones. So um, I did this exhibition and it was great because it was like, um, it was like if people understood that I was talking about Caracas and the context of Caracas and the context of Manhattan, people thought I was, my drawings were about New York. In the context of Caracas, people thought they were about where they really were. And uh, it, it, like, I remember somebody that interviewed me, I think nail it. She said they were like uh, elegant graffitis. And then, 
yeah, I love that part. And, and then <laughs> my sister actually was the one that, I mean, my gallerist at the time, he wanted me to cut the walls. And I'm like, don't do that. We're, it's Venezuela. We don't have, we don't have those infrastructure. Um, I can recreate my drawings. And then as a performative act, which I love, and that's why I named my sister, it was like a family sing. Uh, she used to do theater. She suggested, why don't we erase them? And then we did the performance and it become a vulnerable sing and uh, out of conversation with other people. And then they, they, the box of erasers at the beginning was there just as a gesture, just to play with people's brains. I actually honestly never thought that anybody was going to use them. I, it was... I was I thought it was being fun well no intellectually or whatever I thought it was kind of a joke or whatever but actually it was very vulnerable and the joke lost on me and um, people started erasing it and that's basically like graffitis and like the eraser and and and, and I keep doing this work and this drawings and it has been really interesting how it has changed the meaning through time um, now it seems like it's like about Caracas and Venezuela and the destruction that is happening mm -hmm. so it got a new meaning different from the one that I had at the beginning. And, um, and, and I do, I also, no, I shouldn't tell my trick, but I do them in a way that you can't really erase them. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it must be really emotional when you tell me that, and your work is very emotional. Um, I think that what, you know, it, it, what struck me was that what, this is one of your favorite pieces to, you know, and like, why is that, you know, because it's, um, it's a really sad, um, you know, it's a brilliant, but it's super sad as well. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad that you're able to see how sad it is. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. Um, well, and it was also done in, in, when something personal was happening to me. So it's, 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 I feel like some of the pieces I can say more are when your personal life and your intellectual pursuit or your research can merge. So mm -hmm. this is what this work personally represents to me and maybe that's too much information. But <laughs> I love doing them also because I make, I'm trained as a sculptor, um, as a woodworker actually. And I, to create this, I think three dimensionally, I don't think three dimensionally. So to create this, this drawings, this work, I make models, I make sculptures, I make maquettes. And um, so I make them out of foam core. And it's a very complicated process that in a way feels a little bit masochist. It has like seven steps. And um, in a way, I feel like I live in continuous translation because I was born in Venezuela. I, my language is Spanish and not English. And then I, I live here now. It's the cultural translation, it's the language translation. So in a way, this this piece, I think, without having, I'm, I'm very verbal and I use a lot of language and stories. And maybe it's, I don't know now, maybe it strikes me so much because I feel like I don't, I'm not using any words on this, but I'm, cre I'm creating my own language. Yeah. Work. <laughs> and then erasing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's beautiful. I love this work. Um, let me see. And these are postcards that you did with another artist in collaboration? Yes, I was invited and in, in, I think in 2014 was this piece um, uh, by Creative Time Reports um, to talk about the situation in Venezuela. At the moment, there was like a lot of protests. And, like it was in 2014 was a year where there was like a protest almost every day. And um, it was, it was a hard piece to do. I did it in collaboration with a great artist, a great Venezuelan artist and photographer called Angela Bonadies. I was very lucky that um, I was able to work with her. I admire her a lot. And uh, she had like 400 photographs of what was happening in Venezuela. And um, I, was, I, I selected eight of them. Um, I created, I wrote the postcards and they were a way for me to talk, a, a way for me to talk about Venezuela. Um, so it has been very hard uh, being from there for many reasons. Uh, it has been very hard to see your, your world crumbling and seeing protests every day. And, um, 
it also has been very hard that Chavez, and, and, and I, I'm really respectful about politics. I think it's very important to understand people that think differently. I want to leave that clear, and I mean it. I do have my own personal position, but I do think that you don't understand or can make changes if you don't understand the other side that thinks different than you. Um, but um, it has been very hard. I'm to to live here in the United States and that so many people will support Chavez and will say that you know he had his rhetoric of the left wing and when I what I was seeing was very different than the rhetoric that was being imagined and fantasized here I felt my my opinions were not respected and I felt in a way that discourse here unfortunately it's sometimes a little bit colonized like it's I, I I've it's like assume that what I'm saying is wrong or that I come from certain positions and I think you just always have to hear the other person so it was a way for me to talk about what was happening in Venezuela I do think that a lot of people that in this case the image that you have there are, it's about the militaries and one of the things that strikes me is a lot of the people I, I don't think a lot of the people that abuse power necessarily started that way they started sometimes with really good intentions to make changes and that's not what happens and it becomes militarized and stuff like that and it's like it, i'm fascinated about all of this and in a way it was another a different way to talk about the crumbling that i see uh, that i'm glad that you were i was able to communicate with you in my drawings of everybody knows that cities are built to be this destroyed but here in a more kind of uh, via photographs and words yeah, it's a, how how many works um, and were they displayed uh, like in a grid or did, did you have them? Um, I don't know. Um, first, there were uh, if anybody's interested in reading them, um, they were this, they were first in Creative Time reports and Creative Time reports doesn't exist right now anymore. And I have to thank very much to Marissa and Kareem that invited me to be part of that and Kareem did an extraordinary work was helping me edit and with the language barriers um, so they're in creative time reports uh, they it, it, that was a great publication I wish it still existed because they invited artists from all around the world to talk about the problematics from their point of view and um, but then I decided to display it as a museum way and so mm -hmm. it, it does exist kind of in a vitrine and because this piece was done in 2014 and in a way it was done in a journalistic way now I, I wanted it to exist because I still think it's prevalent and I still think that the text embraces a lot of things that are happening right now and that it could be like a memorabilia I've worked for many years in, muse in the museum world, so also I'm very interested in this language of memorabilia and, and how things become artifacts and what happens when they're displayed in vitrines. So yeah. you can also view them that way. Yeah, so these are the postcards. From one side it has the text, on the other side is there's a picture. Yes. Hola, Ada. How are you? <laughs> um, and is this part of the of of that series also? No, this this work is really funny because this work is like I did it long time ago. It's kind of my first uh, works, and actually, I mean, I shouldn't say it on on this platform, but I will because I think it's good to be inappropriate. I did this in in college, and uh, I did this in two thousand five. It's a really old piece. And it's called Esperanza. My name means hope. And um, my family has made a lot of fun of me that I'm very narcissistic by using my name. But uh, my name has a lot of meaning and language is very important for me. <laughs> so I was like, you, you name me Esperanza. So I like the meaning of hope. And in this piece, I basically paid off the depths of the third world countries. Before being an artist, I studied econo economics. And I'm very interested, and that's very influential in my work. Um, I read the news and I follow economical tendencies. And it's, for me, I see that as a material. And in this piece, I decided to pay off the debts of the third world countries in conjunction with like several institutions like the World Bank and blah, blah, blah. And I, as an homage, the third world countries and created like <laughs> bills under on with my image and my name at that moment um 
bills normally don't have a woman and uh, I kind of have this royal uh, face woman which is not normally how I I'm dressed <laughs> and uh, anyway like the idea was to make stacks of those bills and uh, borrowing or uh, from Felix Gonzalez Torres I make like which is one of my favorite artists I made like the stacks of bills where like people could take the bills um, and uh, but the idea was that eventually there will be no money so the piece will disappear as what happens in the third world countries with the money uh, so that was the final thing this this piece was amazing to make because nobody wanted to make the bills for me it was really hard to print them and I was like come on it's like monopoly money <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> no printer wanted to make me make it to me at the same time it was like all this paradox where I, of course at the beginning I was super ambitious and I was super young so now I do smaller work but then I used to do really big work and I wanted <laughs> to do a gigantic now I like gestures but then I wanted to do a gigantic stockpile of money and it was so much money to make it that I had to end up with a really tiny <laughs> stack which conceptually I really like when reality has to merge and force and change my ideas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so funny. Um, and this, there's uh, also this relationship with, with gold in your work. It's part of um, a solo exhibition that you had, I think it was 2018? Yeah. Yeah. Where was this again? Well, this is one of the sculptures from that series of work. This was at the Westchester Community College State University. So I was invited to do an exhibition there. And um, this piece is called, it's from a series called Amo, y el, es el Amo y el Esclavo, um, The Master and the Slave. What Amo means, it's uh, Arco Minero del Orinoco, which is the gold, mining bow. Um, I've, as the majority of my work has done with the lens of distance and nostalgia and, and without feeling I can do anything to change the reality of what I'm seeing and the loss. It's kind of very sad where the place where it comes from. Um, I decided to follow, as, as I mentioned before, I'm very interested in money and economics. I decided to follow the money. So meanwhile, the news in, in my country in Venezuela were all about politics and stuff like that. And they were trying, what Trump does here, like when they were trying to change the, um, the, the change what people would should really focus on. And I was like, started following the money. So I started following what, the, what was happening with the gold mining bow that it was like, they were like taking the gold from the Amazon, so in a in a regime or in a government that has been um, that has been pra that tries to have a rhetoric that it's about like left wing and about like ecological and about the indigenous rights, what they were doing was devastating the the the, the Amazons. So I've been doing this work. It has been a fascinating work to do. So they're just bricks that are covered with gold. They're very basic and I, I it, it's like it's there in a way I use like I use a lot of bricks as almost all Latin American artists as references and in a way I'm also talking about construction and the the gold bricks have been amazing because like you know as a low budget artist when I take them in my <laughs> suitcase and I've taken them, them to Venezuela and I get of course I get stopped in the aduana like you know like by the militaries or whatever now it's very militarized there i have the most amazing i've had the most amazing conversations where people are like what you know it's a it's kind of a mimic or a joke about a mama mama career or however you say it about like if it's like a lingote a gold bar and that's what it's supposed to be and then i i start getting the most amazing conversations because it's like it's basically talking about that and talking about like a colonization that in the rhetoric it should have stopped but it's still happening and and you know follow the money and the whole thing ends up i mean in the first world and then ends up in the netherlands and ends up in canada and belgium so you know in a way we're all complicit of this problem <laughs> yeah sure 
and uh, you also include uh, some of the words that we that we talked about. I see one of these antennas here. And there's, I mean, you can't see it, um, but there's more work. Um, I think one of those works is, uh, is that one of your framed works from the Domino project? The, Or, the one at the back? Yes. Yes, I have it here. If I can show it to you. Yeah, I mean, I have it here, um, the website, but I would love for people to see that work. And um, I don't know if you want to talk about your domino project. Yes, <laughs> I would love to, because that's how we met. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm um, really lucky that you, maybe you can tell a little bit and then I can tell you. <laughs> I mean, I don't have uh, the image, I, I don't have the images here, but I have the, the event. Um, this was a performance that you did uh, at La Nacional. Um, and it was uh, a really fun night um, called, the performance was called Domingo Familiar, uh, and uh, you basically had like a joke about uh, a, a guide to how to play uh, Venezuelan dominoes, because we all <laughs> play dominoes differently <laughs> um, in our countries, and um, it's a really amazing uh game to 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 build community also but also talk about politics which is really interesting um so basically at la nacional we did this uh event and we had a presenter <laughs> and he was making jokes it was really fun <laughs> And he was making a trivia about the citizenship. So right. So you have to answer questions, uh, the questions that are made in the citizenship uh, exam, which I just had made. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know if, if you want to talk about more about this work. Yes, I'm glad that you brought this project because this, uh, when when I was very lucky, that's when I met Natalia and she collective, and um, they invited me to do this project at La Nacional. And I don't normally do performance work, so it was really hard for me to. I mean, I do performance work. I use myself, but I I I'm not present afterwards. Like I can be in the video, but I don't do live performance. So. Um, But uh, you guys invited me to do this project and I, it was great because I was very vulnerable. I was, I mean, there is always happening something in Venezuela. So I think something was happening at that moment and I was vulnerable and I was vulnerable for, uh, you know, it's scary. It's like all the people that you love are there and you're like scared for them. So, and, and you're living here and you're living a double life, that translation, and you don't know what to do. And I kind of, anyway, but then I decided to i feel like immigration and all those projects have become so grim and and i just started to think that i wanted to bring people to my reality i mean we only hear from the news really horrible things about venezuela and they are horrible but we're also an amazing culture and we're super fun <laughs> and it's it's like the joy of life and that's one of the things that i love about latin american art and about being from Latin America. I mean, Latin American art is very political, but in a poetic way. It's not overtly like, uh, it's not telling you how to think necessarily. And it's, it, it, they're gestures. And I wanted to bring that here. I felt like, well, I don't really know what to say. I really don't want to make a performance. I was going to do like um, a lecture and I really didn't want to make everybody in the audience cry. And I didn't want to cry either. And I decided to bring Domino and bring, and it was amazing because actually it was a different way uh, to talk about immigration and to talk about displacement and problems and it was a night like what everybody told me after that was like I want to be Venezuelan and that was just amazing it was like okay I did my job <laughs> it was um, it was really fun it brought it brought uh, you know it brought home to New York so <laughs> I hope I can do more projects like this yeah Um, it, it's challenging because of COVID right now, but it, it was, I remember it was a really fun night and, 
um, you know, you had lights and um, <laughs> all these like really silly um, uh, como adornos. Um, it was really fun. Um, <laughs> I remember. Yeah, I think that was the last thing that we did as a collective, and um, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. Um, so let's go back to this work. This is part of uh, the exhibition as well, right? Yes. Um, I am fortunately, well, I, I haven't, I, I normally go to Venezuela at least once or twice a year. Unfortunately, was the situation that is right now. Um, I can't travel there. And slowly and steady, it's harder to travel. And even if I go there, it's kind of very dangerous. So a lot of the projects that I did was in Golindano and I don't feel safe going there anymore. I mean, I don't, I don't have the luxury to, you know, to maybe, you know, I, I don't want to get kidnapped. So I don't have the luxury to go and do certain things that I, could do in other circumstances. So in a way, I've been encapsulating my nostalgia and my landscape and everything in different objects. And then this one, it's like um, inside has a drawing. My drawings tend to be kind of that you barely can see them. That's part of it. And it just says, en el mar la vida es más sabrosa. In, in the sea, like that's a song. It's a very famous song and my grandmother used to sing it. So, and it, um, it basically is like in, in the sea life is nicer and it's like, you know, it, and in a way I don't, by seeing the Caribbean and by, I mean, by seeing the Caribbean, by seeing Venezuela from, from the distance, it's very easy to kind of like encapsulate it and to like not uh, deal with well, I'm dealing with the problems, but to kind of glor glori glorify it. <laughs> so in a way, that's what, what I'm doing right now. I'm encapsulating everything so I can have a little bit of what I, I'm missing. <laughs> yeah. No, and it's very beautiful. Like, it looks like a postcard also, like a souvenir type of postcard. The one that you would get, like, in the store, like, in the, uh, in the store. And, Yeah really beautiful um i don't know if we have questions let me see there's a um yes we have a, a a question here would you please expand upon your statement every everybody knows cities are meant to be destroyed um well that is a beautiful song, as I mentioned before, of Gaetano Veloso. Uh, I forgot the name of the song. That's not the title of the song. It's just how it starts. Um, and, uh, you know, like, it's not like I heard first the song and then I, I was I was doing the drawings and then I heard the song and it was it clicked. It kind of said in words what I wanted to say. Um, I am. I, I was trained as an artist in the United States. I was trained as a uh, as a cabinet maker, and I also studied economics and politics. I didn't graduate from them, but in Venezuela, so I I did not want to be an artist when I was in Venezuela because it felt a luxury. Uh, I I wanted to be a craft person because it was a I felt I it was a place that needed things. To, you know, you need you need things in, in Latin America. Uh, here I understood with the distance the importance of art and of ideas. Um, anyway, that's going in a very uh, weird way to explain you that. But um, the thing of this is that in Latin, Venezuelan artists, to be a specific, and especially artists from Caracas, I feel the city is very the city is very present so it's like i feel like all of us have the imagine the imagery of the city it's like you can't get rid of it and i don't want to get rid of it either but it's kind of like the it's very present and we all deal with the city so in a way like for me it was like it, it's seeing my city crumble 
I mean, it's seeing like, you know, meanwhile, all of the other cities in, in, in the world for the most are starting to be more modern. My one super modern city is becoming to deteriorate and to fall apart. So that's where it comes from. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I don't know if anyone has questions for Esperanza. Esperanza, do you want to talk a little bit more about um, another work? Oh, someone put the, the lyrics of the... Of the <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't know if you like, I think, it, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> No, no, I think this is uh, amazing. Um, and everyone, please uh, go check out uh, Esperanza's work. I think it's uh, nice and poetic. Today, I was invited to to talk at 8 a.m. before work. <laughs> uh, in class, um, and the class was called, um, I think it was text as, uh, as art or something like that. And we were talking about um, Venezuela, like, curiosamente. Um, the, the, the professor sent them a, a, a video about Venezuela and um, I invited them to come and see them. <laughs> the, hope that some of them are here. But we were talking about how art can be, you know, as a way, as you were saying, um, can be also, another way of storytelling and um, for me I it's it's very interesting also to to work with artists like you um, because you know there's there's a story to be told and you want as many readings as you you can get from from the work and I, that's what I love about about this um, body of work that you have um, let me see if I can get uh, more more of your work um before instagram kick us out um <laughs> yeah oh there's more does it hurt to erase your work yes it's <laughs> very hard it's very vulnerable um i I mean, it, it is, it's cathartic. It's, uh, it's not very market driven, <laughs> but that's not my focus or interest. But in a way, um, it feels kind of masochist that you spend so much time doing your work and then it's erased. But at the same time, that is kind of very poetic and it's nice to end up with nothing but it hurts very much. It hurts very much when other people do it <laughs> too. But I think those vulnerabilities, I mean, as an artist, I like questioning things and I like thinking about uh, what, what that arise in my mind is more interesting than keeping the object. Yeah. Um, we also have other questions here. Um, uh, so Luis Corso, um, is asking, can you tell us about the art community in Venezuela at the moment? Is it regulated? Also, what spaces do you recommend looking into or what artists should we look out for? Well, well, there is a great community of artists in Venezuela. That's a great question. Um, as I said, I was not a uh, educated as an artist in Venezuela. I was educated here. So my relationship has been from a distance. I tried to be very involved. Uh, there are so many great artists. There's so many people I admire. And I admire so many spaces that are still doing things with the difficulties that are there. Uh, as a start, I can always recommend you to go and check Espacio Mercantil and all the projects that the amazing creator Taia Rivero uh, has done. I admire and respect her so much. You should also check Los Galpones. There is an amazing space called a uh, gallery that was before Oficina Numero Uno. Now it's Abra um, that is run is an artist run space in a way uh, by Luis Romero. He's a great creator that has uh, an artist that has uh, been like 
doing a real mark for artists in Venezuela. And there's also other galleries like Beatriz Hill and the Museum. Like I can send a list, I will be happy <laughs> because it's like so many people that are amazing. And it's and then Maracaibo, there's also a great, um, uh, th there's a great artistic community. Uh, I mentioned one of my favorite artists that I think she's present, Angela Bonadias, that I've did collaborations with her. And uh, unfortunately, um, what hap started first as migration, you know, my, when I came here as an immigrant in 2000, I came as a temporary, you know, I just was temporarily going to live here. And it just happened that I, anyway, like what I'm trying to say is that uh, unfortunately a lot of Venezuelan artists are all around the world because, it, you know, depending on your circumstance, not everybody can move back. It can be because of money. It can be because of security. It, can be for so many reasons so a lot of amazing artists are, are, are right now all around the world and i can i will be happy to give a list because it's <laughs> really incredible the community there yeah and we're saying um as Vin says that's a beautiful question um and Ruthie says, Gracias Esperanza por hacer, me da la nostalgia de una obra tan inteligente y sensible. Um, you are very loved. <laughs> I've been receiving a lot of uh, really nice messages also, and uh, a lot of people that really love you as a person, but also as, a, as an artist, so that's um, really nice. Um, yeah. We have about a few minutes. Um, I don't know if you have more questions. Um, um, I'm seeing in the audience also another artist that flat of Venezuela that are amazing. I'm seeing Amalia Caputo, Juan Jose Olavarria, Marily Cole. Um, there's Angela. <laughs> there's like so many great people. Um, my dear friend Eduardo Cairuz that is in Australia, Eduardo Vargas, there's like amazing people um, down there. <laughs> and yeah. um, and it, it, it's, it's incredible the work that is done because we don't have a platform and we don't have a country. You can also follow, I mean, now I feel like I'm doing, but I think we deserve it. I'm doing propaganda. Like you can also <laughs> like see the incredible work that Enrique Faria Gallery does. And like, you know, that Gabriela Rangel did before in America Society. I mean, there's like a lot of work. There's a lot of people that are really incredible. Unfortunately, we are all around. So mm -hmm. it's harder to become a community if you are all <laughs> everywhere. We don't yeah. have a place. We don't have a government that supports us. We don't have spaces. But you do what you can. <laughs> yeah. No, and your work is really important uh, for that precise reason. Um, to, you know, for 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 continuing with the with you know preserving your culture, your identity also, um, and uh, you know being a guard for it salvaguardar ese, ese patrimonio cultural que, yeah, que les toca mucho, pero no, no lo hacen. Um, so, thank you so much, Esperanza. I think um, Instagram will take us out pretty soon. But um, for everyone who joined uh, now, this video will be saved um, in our YouTube channel, and also you'll be able to see it on Instagram. Uh, so thank you so much, Esperanza. Gracias a ti. Thank you so much for the invitation. And thank you so much, everybody that joined. <laughs> All right. Bye. Chao. Un abrazo. Gracias. Igualmente. Chao.